You've heard the term args and quarks, but really, what are they? That's what we're breaking down in today's video. I'm going to take you guys through two examples for each so you can understand and actually get working with using args and quarks in your Python code. Welcome back, guys, to the channel. Welcome back, guys, for another episode of Code with Josh. For obvious reasons, I'm Josh, and I'm stoked to have you guys here, as always. Before I dive into today's episode, help me out, hit that like button, and subscribe. That really does help out my channel. Today's video, I'm breaking down the concept of args and quarks through examples so you know when we use these, why we use these, and how we use these to optimize and speed up your Python code. We're going to break it all down so you can get started using these right now to optimize your code. Before I really jump into that, okay guys, if you want to master Python faster than you ever thought was possible, check out the first link in the description. That is my newly launched Python masterclass where I take eight years of my teaching experience bottled up into a course that you guys can go from zero to knowing and I can help you along your journey. First link in the description, um, I have my newsletter down there that's absolutely free. Head on down, check it out, I'd love to have you guys. Now let's jump into why you're here, what are args and what are quarks and how can I use them? All right, guys, we're kicking things off with args. I have two pre-made examples for you, the before. We'll code out the after using args and then jump right into quarks. Remember, you can use the timestamps to jump through any sections that you want to see. Now, you may have seen this, you may have not. This is args. And args is really a special function that allows you to accept a number of what we call positional arguments, right? So in this function, I have multiply, which has three parameters, A, B, C. Really, I'm just multiplying these together. Now, if I ran this, uh, the output's gonna be 24. And if I call my function, I need to give it one, two, three arguments to match our parameters. But really, what if I wanna have more or less? you would need to rewrite the entire function. So what args does is we can reuse the function more so it simplifies your code, it's more flexible, and it's more reusable. Now, how I could rewrite this is I could create my function again called multiply. But this time in multiply, instead of specifying exactly ABC, I can say, hey, this function is going to take some number of arguments. I don't know how many yet, but I want you to be able to handle it well. So if I were to rewrite this, I could create a variable called result is equal to one. And then what args allows you to do is this is essentially an iterable. This acts just like a tuple. So I can actually loop through this like a list or a tuple. I could say for every number in all my arguments that I give it, I'm using args right here and it's basically a tuple. So I can loop through that. What do I want to do each time? Well, I want to take the result and I want to multiply it by the current number. When we're done, we want to return the result. Okay, just like that. Now this time, I'm just going to actually turn off the pre-existing code. Um, when I print off, let's do multiply two times. Okay, so multiply once. Let's take it again. And let's do the first time. Let's do two, three, four. But in the next one, maybe I want to do five, six, seven, eight, nine. Now this function can handle those because we're using args. It doesn't matter how many positional arguments we give it. It's still going to be able to handle the code correctly, right? So run your code and you can see there it handles it just like we want to, right? So that's great. That's a use case for args. We can make our functions more reusable when we don't exactly know how many arguments we're going to give it. Right, so that was the first example. If I go down to the next example, you guys can actually pause the video, try and rewrite this code and see if you can hack it, right? I have a function called combine. Once again, this takes ABC. And all I'm doing here, okay, very basic, is I'm just printing off the string. So I have subscribed to Code with Josh. Hit that like button, subscribe, that helps out the channel. How could we rewrite this to accept args? 
Well, let's create that function again. We're just going to say args. Now, I want to point something out here. I keep saying args. You can call this anything you want to, but what really matters is we're using the asterisk, the star. Okay, so this could be called anything, but in most code, you're going to see args. Okay, people stick with that. It's very good practice to stick with that. But for example, if I just said words, it's still going to work. I could just come down here and I could return. Let's say I want to return and I want to join together the words. Okay, it's going to handle the same way. Now, when I come down here, let's call our function. Let's just take the first string I have. Okay. And uh, make sure my function is spelled correctly. In the other string, make up something else. Okay, so let's call combine. Let's say uh, join my Python masterclass. Guys, that is the first link in the description, my newly launched Python masterclass. Head on down, first link, check it out. I would love the chance to help you grow in Python and help you along your journey. Uh, turning off these two, okay, running your code, you can see in the first one I have three. In the second one we have five positional arguments. So if I run that, even though we change the words, it doesn't matter, it's still going to act accordingly. Pretty cool. Okay, so that is where we can give multiple positional arguments and it enhances the flexibility of your code and also the reusability of your code, args. Now let's jump right into quarks. Can you guess what that means? Now that you've wrapped your head around quarks, you probably already guessed. So quarks is keyword arguments, all right? So they allow a function to accept any number of keyword arguments, key value pairs. So previously in args, that was a tuple. You created an iterable. You can give your function any number of positional arguments. Quarks is any number of keyword arguments. Really, guys, really, this is just a dictionary of key value pairs that we are creating on the fly, right? The reason to do this, not only are you able to now accept more than three keys, but we can also save space and allow your code to run faster. If you need to create a dictionary to store your data, that takes up space. It takes Python time to run that block of code. When we don't want to use a dictionary per se, I can use quarks, which once again increases the speed of your code, it simplifies the code, and it makes your functions more reusable. So here's a basic function printing off my info. Josh27, I'm originally from Pennsylvania, okay? If we were to write this with quarks, let's go down here for our first example, uh, I will just say user info. Now this time I can say two asterisks, and we're gonna say quarks, okay? Now the single one is for args, two is for quarks. Inside here then, I can treat it just like a dictionary. So for example, for every key and value in my dictionary in quarks.items, because quarks is treated like a dictionary, it allows us to use the dictionary functions. So items is gonna return the key and the value within that. I can come down here and I'm just gonna print, let's say a uh, key, and uh, let's say the value here. Now that our function's done, I can use this as a function, giving it any number of keyword arguments. But remember, in a dictionary, we have a key and a value. So any arguments I give, they need to have a key with the value. So for example, in the first part, I said Josh. I could say name is equal to Josh. Now, this part's important. While yes, this is technically the key in your quarks dictionary, it's not a string. Okay, this is like a variable and you're assigning the value. So Josh, age is a number. Uh, we could put here from or location, not anymore, but it used to be PA. Uh, and I could even put here, let's just say like email, right? I'm adding an additional keyword argument. So zero to knowing at gmail.com. Okay, uh, I'm going to turn off the first two. Okay, now when you run this, we're gonna see all those keyword arguments output into our system. So here we go, name Josh, age 27, location PA, email. It's accepting all of those.
Okay, pretty cool. All right, let's do let's do one more here I have for you guys. Okay, so in this one, this is just a refactoring, okay? I wanna challenge you guys, using what you just learned, try and pause the video, all right? Refactor this function using quarks to make it more reusable. How can we do that? Well, let's say we're working with some kind of database, right? So I have a function, insert user. Right now, quarks. Um, once again, I don't have to call this quarks. You could call this anything you want. It's standard practice to call it quarks. As long as we have the two asterisks, the two stars, that's really all we need. Let's say we're inputting data into the database. So insert in, uh, where am I? Insert data into database. Let's just say that as a print statement. Once again, for every key and value in, what's the dictionary called now? Data dot items. Okay, what do I want to do in this case? Once again, let's just keep it nice and easy. Let's just get the key and uh, let's just get the value. Okay, but this time I kind of want to show you guys, let's call it two times. Let's say insert user. The first time let's mimic what I have. So name is equal to Josh. Let's say uh, email. So email is equal to zero to knowing at gmail.com. Okay, uh, guys, let's add one here for, let's say I have a website, which I do, and that's where I host my newly released Python masterclass. So I'm gonna put here zero to knowing.com, and let's just put here again, age 27. Okay, so here's all these keyword arguments that I've collected for me, but maybe I have a user that, hey, his name is, is Bob, and Bob, all I have for Bob is Bob is 37. Right, I don't have all this extra data. When I run this, we're still going to see, let's turn off the first two actually, all of our keyword arguments are handled correctly. This is really the advantage. So here you go, name Josh, email, the website is here, age, and then it calls for Bob only handling the keyword arguments we give it. So that's really the power of using args and quarks. And when you guys start experimenting with other modules and frameworks, those frameworks are already built to handle quarks. So oftentimes we are actually coding and we're just giving uh, the value to a key that's already in that framework. So I really hope this helps you understand how to use args and quarks here in Python. I hope today's video broke down how you can guys get using args and quarks right now in your code. What they are, how we use them, when to use them, all that kind of thing. If you guys got value today, help me out, hit the like button, drop a comment, subscribe. That really does help out the channel. Any questions you have, okay, let me know in the comments. I love engaging with you guys down there and really helping you grow in Python. Remember, if you guys wanna join in for my Python Masterclass, that's the first link in the description, as well as my Python newsletter, where I write weekly topics, breaking things down, all for you guys. Well, guys, until next week's episode of Code with Josh, I will see you then.